why is cybersecurity so important? Well, first of all, no one's immune. Did you know that approximately 3 billion phishing emails are sent each day and about 1 million passwords are stolen every week? And 500,000 pieces of new malware are detected every day. So this is a constant looming threat that we need to be prepared to deal with. Now, cybersecurity is specifically important for older adults. Now, older adults, by virtue of their age, are more at risk for online scams and attacks. Adults over the age of 60 experience higher rates of cybercrime than any other age group. But equipped with the right tools and knowledge, you can protect yourself. So there are a number of threats that exist online, but today we're going to focus on four key threats. These are password attacks, malware attacks, man in the middle attacks, and phishing attacks. Now, password attacks are attacks wherein someone guesses or steals your passwords and gains access to your accounts. Malware attacks occur when malicious software, so viruses, trojans, worms, or otherwise are installed onto your device and are used to steal data, destroy data, or slow down your device. Now, man in the middle attacks happen when hackers are able to eavesdrop on your connection to either a website or an internet connection. So say you're at a public library and using their internet. If the connection isn't secure, malicious players can get in the middle of that connection and steal sensitive information and eavesdrop on communications. And lastly, phishing attacks. Now, phishing attacks are probably the most common threat we face on a day-to-day -day basis. And this is also known as social engineering. It happens when a person poses as a trustworthy person or institution, so maybe a friend or your bank, and sends you some sort of correspondence, usually via email or text message, that aims to get sensitive information out of you. Maybe it's a bank asking you to reset your password, or a friend asking for help with a purchase online. So let's get into how you can prevent each one of these type of attacks. Password attacks. How can we protect ourselves against them? Step number one, set a strong password. Now, this may seem obvious, but we're all guilty of getting a little lazy and using a password that maybe isn't the strongest. But your password is your first line of defense to all your accounts. And someone guessing your password can mean a lot of your information being at risk. So setting strong passwords is very important. So in order to exemplify to you what is a strong password, I'm going to give you two examples. The first password is this one, Skippy123! exclamation mark. Now this is an example of a weak password. It's weak because it's simple. Uh, I'm going to assume that Skippy is the name of someone's pet, so it's easily guessable by anyone who has even a little bit of information on you. And it also follows some common patterns, namely making the first letter capital, using one, two, three at the end, and an exclamation at the mark at the end. Those are very common elements to passwords. Now, here's an example of a stronger password. It says, I like mint ice cream. Now, the reason this password is stronger is one, because it's longer, and two, because it incorporates different elements throughout the password, rather than just sticking them onto the front or the end. So using capital letters in the middle, replacing letters with numbers or symbols. This makes this password more complicated and harder to guess. Number two, change your passwords regularly. It is really important to change your passwords regularly. Even if your password is really good, every once in a while, our passwords might be vulnerable to different breaches on different platforms we're on. Don't use the same password on multiple accounts. This is pretty straightforward. If someone guesses your password for one account, then if all your passwords are the same, they now have access to all of your accounts. Use other authenticating factors like a fingerprint scan or a face scan on your smartphone or tablet, or set up two-factor authentication so that even if someone does get your password, they will not be able to access your account without confirming it on another one of your devices. Number five, if you have trouble memorizing longer passwords or differentiating your passwords, use a password manager and don't save your password to your browser. 
Now, using a password manager can make it way easier to track all your passwords and they're encrypted so they keep your passwords nice and safe. Saving passwords to your browser, though it's tempting and easy, leaves your passwords vulnerable to being accessed. So I would suggest against it. Instead, use a dedicated password manager. All right, let's talk about malware attacks. Now, malware attacks are things that we can protect ourselves against by using a number of softwares and by keeping our softwares up to date. Number one, consider using an antivirus software. Now, antivirus software may be less relevant on a phone or tablet, and you may not need one on there, but you can use one if you want to be extra safe. They are more recommended for computers, though, because computers tend to be at higher risk for malware. So using an antivirus software is a great first line of defense. Number two, always keep your software up to date, whether that's your antivirus software or just your general device software. Now, software updates on our phones, tablets, and computer really rarely change anything about how we interact with the interface of our device. Most of the time, these updates are used to update the safety protocols on our device and to keep up with the constantly changing threats that exist online. So when an update becomes available, don't push it away for too long. Update it as soon as you can. Number three, beware of unsafe downloads. Again, this is a bit less relevant for phones and tablets where we tend to use our built-in app store, our Apple App Store or Google Play Store to download programs. But on a computer, we tend to get most of our downloads from our internet browser. And this can leave us a bit more vulnerable downloading unsafe software. So beware, do make sure you're double checking the websites you're downloading software off of, make sure that they're secure and safe. Number four, use a modern web browser. Now, once again, this is a bit less relevant for phones and tablets, as most phones and tablets do use modern web browsers. But if you have a computer, specifically an older computer, and you're still using something like Microsoft Explorer, you may want to consider downloading a newer browser, something like Google Chrome, Microsoft Edge, Firefox. These browsers have protocols set up in them to keep you safe and to make sure that you don't stumble onto an unsafe website or download something that's malicious. Number five, don't use unknown USBs or other external devices. Now, this is not that common of a tactic, but sometimes it is used. Hackers will drop USBs or chargers that are equipped with malicious software, hoping that someone will pick them up, plug them into their device unknowingly and download this software. So if you don't recognize it, if it's not yours, don't plug it into your device. All right, next is man in the middle attacks. So how do we keep ourselves safe from these? Number one, use a modern web browser. Modern web browsers are equipped with safety protocols to steer us away from unsafe or unsecure websites. So as long as you're using a modern web browser, you shouldn't be stumbling onto unsafe websites and be at risk of this kind of attack. Number two, don't visit unsecure websites. Now, again, if you're using a modern web browser, you probably will be somewhat protected against this, but there are ways to know if you are on a safe or unsafe website. The main way is when you are visiting a website, look at where you put the URL. Where you put the URL, there should be a lock to the left of the www dot section, and that indicates that this is a secure encrypted connection. You can also check the URL to make sure the website is using the most up-to-date safety protocols. Look at the URL and check for the letters HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash ahead of the website URL. If that's there, that's another sign that this is a secure and safe website. Number three, steer clear of public Wi-Fi networks, whether that's the library, public transport, or the airport. Now, every once in a while, we do have to use these networks, and that's perfectly okay. But when you're using them, do make sure you use a VPN. VPN stands for Virtual Private Network, and it's a type of software that encrypts and protects our connection to a host. Now, if you already have antivirus software, you may already have access to a VPN, as many antivirus softwares come equipped with one. 
but if you don't have antivirus or your antivirus doesn't have one, you can always download one. Just again, make sure you're downloading a safe one from your app store or make sure you're downloading it from the correct site. And lastly, let's talk about protecting ourselves against phishing attacks. Now, as I said, phishing attacks often come in the form of unsolicited emails and texts. So number one is read all unsolicited emails and texts carefully and don't be afraid to read them. Oftentimes when we get an email that we see as sketchy or potentially harmful, we tend to, to not read them. You are not at risk by simply opening a phishing message. You are only at risk if you click on or download anything from the email. So reading it is not a harm to you. And it's a great way to start to understand patterns of how these phishing emails look and to keep yourself up to date on what the newest tactics are so you can spot them more easily in the future. So one, read them carefully. Two, when you're reading them carefully, check for grammar and spelling errors. This is really common when it comes to phishing emails and texts. As I said earlier, there's about 3 billion of them sent every day. So these people are really relying on mass versus doing a really great job. They're just counting on people not being careful. So they often make mistakes in their writing. So check for grammar and spelling errors. And three, check the email address and domain. Oftentimes, these emails are coming from people posing as other people. So look more carefully at the email address. Check for things that are spelt slightly off or a different domain. For example, my email is macaulay at cyberseniors.org. And a scammer might change that email to Macaulay and spell my name with a Y at the end instead of two E's. And then they may use the domain at cyberseniors.com. These are subtle differences, but they are really important to take note of because they can make the difference between you spotting a scammer and not spotting one. And step number four, as I said, you're not at risk for opening these emails, but when you do, don't click on anything don't download anything and don't give out sensitive information. If you do receive one of these emails, the best way to deal with it is simply to mark it as spam or delete it right away and move on. All right, that was a little bit of Cybersecurity 101. I hope it was helpful. <laughs>